Hello guys, good day to you, I'm Adam from Your Hype Games and today we're going to see a few things that have changed in God of War. This probably is going to be kind of a series of videos that I'm going to make to show you. This video is going to come as long as I learn things on God of War. Okay, like you can see, this is Godot's editor. It didn't change that much, but actually it did change. Because there are new things here and we can find them right now. First of all, we can add some scenes randomly here just to make a point. If you have ever used a software like Photoshop, there is the History tab. And that's right guys, we have that here as well. Right here, on your right, next to the Node tab or Inspector tab, you can find the History tab. If you click that, and you can select some of those points, and we can go backwards basically, back on my steps, what I did. You can obviously use Ctrl Z to go back, but this is just to make sure that you can select exactly the point where you want to go back. With that said, let's start with the next thing that has changed. Now, the next thing that has changed is really related to the pixel art, and it's about the filters, output filters. If you are used to Godot 3, well, there are some steps that you need to make to make sure your pixel art good and not blurry. Now, if you do the same here and you try to bring some pixel art on your screen, well, you can see that it is blurry, so you can go to the import tab, like always, and you can try here to find out where is it you need to disable the filter. And you find no filter here. That's because it has changed. It is under inspector. And we have this section, the canvas item section. You go under texture, so you can find the texture property and the filter property. Here under filter, there's the voice inherit. Well, you can click this and you can choose nearest and that's going to fix your pixel art. It's going to be the nearest to the real pixel art. Now, why does this say inherit? Well, that's because you can decide for all your textures that you import inside your software. Well, you can decide the filter. So you can go under project, project settings. You can go under texture. It, it, you can locate it under rendering. And here you can decide that all your textures have this filter, a linear nearest or nearest with mid maps and linear with mid map so you can decide for all your projects so you don't have to do this step each time basically now the next thing is that you can use sprite 3d or animated sprites 3d sprites these two nodes allow you to use pixel art or whatever 2d sprites in your 3d world and that's very cool you can see here something very familiar and that's happening right with these two nodes so you can achieve something like this, it's very gorgeous, you can apply all the effects you want. But how to achieve this kind of thing? Well, it's pretty easy actually. So to make that, you need an animated sprite. Like you can see, I have here an animated sprite, it has all these frames here. But the more important thing is probably this part here. Well, you can decide different things here. And the first thing that you might want is actually to make the filter again to nearest. So you basically need to go under flags here and find the texture filter and go under nearest. Like you can see, this is the linear filter, but if you go under near, it's going to give you that crisp pixel art. Okay, the next thing very cool about animated sprites is that they can actually cast shadows and they can interact with light, basically can be uh, can be lit up by light. Now, what, what's happened? You always find all those, those properties under here. Under flags, you go, just go and select shaded, and it's going to create this shadow, basically. Okay, guys, this is a little interruption. Apparently, most of you aren't subscribed to the channel, you watch the video, you like the video, or you don't like the video, but you aren't subscribed to the channel. So please, subscribe to the channel so we can grow, I can grow the channel and bring more videos. So let's jump back to the video. Now you're thinking probably, well, I'm going to make something like Octopath Traveler. So I'm going full pixel art in 3D world. So how can I do that? Buildings. Well, I'm going to use sprites, right? Sprite 3D. So you go here and you put the texture and you say, wait a minute, I want some normal maps. Where do I find the normal maps? At the moment, I'm not sure if this is the right way to do this, but I came with this kind of idea. So you need to go here under geometry, override basically the material. So I just created a standard material 3D. And here you just go 
under transparency. Under transparency, you need the alpha channel activated so that your textures are transparent. And next, under albedo, you just go and put your texture. So you can easily understand that there's the normal map section, so you need to activate that and drag and drop the normal map texture here. You can see that your pixel art isn't yet that crisp, right? That's true, and you can go here under sampling this time. And to make sure to activate the right, the nearest filter again, you need to go under sampling and you need to make sure here to click on nearest. And that will change your texture again. There are different options here to, to go and to explore. I'm exploring myself, so I'm not going farther in this thing because I might say some not right things. <laughs> The next cool thing about Godot 4 is actually that Godot 4 can create documentation for you. And how does that work? Well, you can see here I have my camera 3D and it has a GD script. Well, first of all, you need to create a class name for this new section. Here's my class name and it's called my camera. So to add description to the documentation, what you need to do is basically to double hashtag your comments. For example, this says this is my own camera class and here it goes. And this is the speed. Okay, the documentation doesn't work like this, so it, this is just me. This is just me. I'm very bad on this, so. Okay, so basically if I try to click here, at the moment, I don't know why it's not working. It basically doesn't give me the documentation, but actually I can find it on the, if I search here for help, I can find my class, my, my cam basically, and I can click here. And you can see that here we have all the comments basically. Here we have, this is my own class. Uh, this is the speed basically. And it already gives us variables, methods, separated and properties. I mean, this is cool. This is cool. You have some default values as well there, 0.01, because that values were set by me. Okay, guys, this was all. I'm Andrew from Millhead Games. Thank you for watching. Hopefully, this video is going to help you to switch from, from Godot 3 to Godot 4 and convince you to switch, actually. But I can totally understand if you want to stay with Godot 3 for the moment, since it has been out for a long, long time. If you have any questions or want to point something that I missed or that I made some mistakes here because I'm experimenting as well, just let me know down in the comment section. And more important, keep devin' games!